guys how are you i hope you're well happy to be here i'm glad that uh you're listening i know you're learning i know uh you know this could be helpful to someone yeah so uh we left off uh where we came into worcester massachusetts yeah and as we are coming in my husband is asking me how what do you think of this place yeah they had been saying it looks like st john's and i was like it it looks like halifax yeah i don't know but i'm thinking it's not mine to like so i don't care right but now we are beginning to settle um I'm so glad to be around the kids, yeah? And uh, it seems like, you know, as soon as we come back from Washington, hubby has to go away for training. So uh, it's, uh, I'm around, mom is around, yeah? So nimeanza discipline, bad cops, <laughs> bad cop stories, yeah? But now Tamwa has to now show me through uh, what they've been doing, how they do things here. Uh, so um, in some kind of training, yeah? Now when hubby comes back, I'm like, all this time i'm researching where can i get a job or what do i have to do yeah but i know in the states yeah you have to wait four months and i'm like four months uh -uh. i'll just wait for my passport apply uh you know another visa for canada because now it's over the visa was for two years it could have been longer but we didn't have much uh you know validity in our passport yeah so getting to know this place still teaching in the broken to hole they don't know but i'm very broken despite being in the states i've seen my shege <laughs> you know i'm like Whoa! you have no idea you know so much time it takes to adjust yeah we just don't know when uh you know our people come abroad and so uh you know with every place i am going uh you know my people are feeling okay this is okay when i'm alone my people are feeling like you should be taking care of us you know like you should be doing better now why are you so like this your husband used to take care of you what's wrong with you and on my job i'm like god every my bills i cannot even meet you know i don't even have savings you know in this place as i'm coming here i have like just 400 dollars so i'm feeling so misunderstood yeah and people are like oh you're going to all these places but you're not even helping us it's just so bad you know and i'm like okay now all this guilt i'm carrying so much guilt for not being able to help like other people who come abroad yeah so i'm like before i go back i have to find a job so i start looking for a job uh you know made jobs <laughs> i'm looking for jobs that you know are available i'm not even well connected whenever i see a kenyan i'm like is there a job you know and now I talk, like I will talk to some people who are looking like for a child mind. I'm like, I can do this very well. I talk to the person, the way this person responds and is talking down to me and the salary. I'm like, miss me with that. Because we always assume they have so much money and they're like to watch my kids and not even for long. I cannot pay that, you know? Hey, I'm like, okay, uh, I cannot also work for free okay so i continue teaching on this uh you know i'm just so scared of the day i'll be told you know i uh, you know find something to do and i'm waiting for my passport i'm like guy and if i don't get a job what am i how am i going to do the visa processing although it's not expensive i know now so eventually i see a kenyan restaurant and i apply because i know that i can do but so far I'll have to either move there or something, yeah? So I go to see the lady anyway. I'm like, I can even move to the area just to work, yeah? But the process takes so long. In the meantime, she has a niece of hers who has a birthday, and I'm like, ah, don't worry, I'll give you the cake for free. And you know that's how my cake journey, uh, chapter, Worcester chapter started, yeah? Because somebody tasted the cake I brought to this party, and she ordered. And from there, it's like... People were just ordering. They were feeling this cake is so Kenyan. Yeah, they're asking for the flavors they used to enjoy. Marble cake, all right? So if you have such skills, I'm telling you, as you come, perhaps you may not have somewhere to work from. Like me, I didn't have a place to work from in that, uh, you know, place. And I was like, guy, if I am caught cooking food, people will give you chances here, all right? And now I realize, oh my God, this is what God was saying when I left St. John's, Chapatitano. And so um, I'm like, okay, but I'm living in an apartment. I can't, I can't say that I'm doing this. But some people, like people who knew me from before, 
you know schoolmates would order and i would ship for them yeah now i'm doing this thing so illegally but i'm like guy i don't know if i'm caught it's over for me yeah mm -hmm. so uh now we are coming to the end of year somehow we stayed and because mike uh when he went to apply he was told he has to apply for the kenyan id first yeah but anyway we kind of stayed somehow we just fell into the routine of things i think everybody including hubby is happy to have mom around everybody like we're just living as a family yeah so uh and i'm looking for work and all this so as these people are buying i find enough money to apply for my employment card it was like 450 dollars but i didn't have it and i wasn't going to ask because if i'm told there's no money I've never even been one to ask my husband for money. So I'm starting now when I already know he's broke, yeah? So I'm just suffering on my own, teaching broken to whole, okay? So um, uh, so this guy, the owner of this house says that uh, he wants us to come to this house. This house is in shambles. In the meantime, Mike is working here and it's COVID period, yeah? So Mike can't go anywhere. So he's coming to work here and it's just a mess. I've never been able to see the inside. Whenever I come, the owner has such a big dog. I have to stay outside with Tosh, yeah? The day I saw the house, I wanted to cry. And it's the next April, yeah? April 2020. I'm like, how did you guys say yes to this? We cannot live here. It is broken. It was like the, some walls were down. How? How? How how is this America when it's so much worse than Kenya? There's just one bathroom in this place. I'm like, husband, please consider. And he's like, at least the compound is nice. The kids can play outside. You know, look on the positive side. I'm like, okay, I have no choice. And now before we even came here, I, I could see visions. And it's not really visions. I could see like I'm giving people, I'm handing people food from my back door, okay? So I'm thinking, yeah, this thing is happening, but how will I ask husband? And so I go to the, um, there's a place now that, uh, you know, you can have, a, you can use uh, the city kitchen, yeah? And you can get registered there and everything. And I go show this guy, uh, you know, my papers from Canada. And apparently they are valid because they are Canadian, yeah? So my certificate is valid and the food serve and everything. Uh, but the kitchen is so expensive. It's like $30 an hour. $30 an hour is the amount of chapos we are making, you know. I don't think we, you can make more than 50 chapos uh, an hour, you know. So I'm like, wow. Okay. So, but I now come, people are still asking. So I'm cooking from this house. And you know, now I'm starting now to get the guys into the job. Please help me. Please help me. I pay them whatever comes. Eventually they're like, mom, we don't want to work for you. And one time Mike finds me with a lot of work. And now that's how he joins Chapatitano <laughs> as an employee. Now I'll tell you why I mentioned that. Yeah. Uh, when I was in the app and I, I asked Mike to come work for the summer. I would hear God's voice telling me, your son is coming to save you. I did not know how. And now I, I wondered how, and God would show me how, through getting Mike, I got connected to this family that children belong to them, Merus, okay? So I'm like, oh, that's how, okay? So now God was showing me he's coming to bring me home. I didn't know how, like how we are not even started. We've not even started, you know, uh, we, we don't even know that we will go to the States. Yeah. I'm, this guy is supposed to work and then go back to St. John's. But God had another plan. By this time, I'm so humbled. I'm open to God's plan. I don't even know whether we are coming, going or gone. Okay. So now that we are here, this guy steps in and he's the one now who saves me. Yeah. Now, do you remember when God uh, would say, quit this job uh, when I was in St. John's? Now, uh, he had told me the same while I'm in Canada, but I was going to go back and get another job somewhere. And when he said it, I still continued working. But this lady who broke her leg was now back on the last day. She messed me up so bad. She was so bad to me in front of the customers. By that time, I was even working as a cashier. I was working both kitchen and cashier. I've trained. I'm good at this, yeah? Not so good, I have to admit. 
and this one day i'm like you know what it's over i'm gone by that time my hand has been aching and i am not saying anything okay now because of this new energy i'm working with my hand it's not aching i'm happy we are working with my son we are work and he you know i used to take the chapatis uh you know to the customers when they came to pick at first yeah then like when i met my kenyans i was like what's wrong with us the aunties we would see so sophisticated and all coming to visit from america tatawa tatawa america i was looking at my people and i'm like why are they as broken as me they've been here they're earning you know these are the people now supporting my business what is wrong with us why are we so broken and they like now me in my lowly station as a chapati maker some would be so rude to me some would tell me obvious obvious things yeah some would call me at uh, you know crazy hours i'm like this is so noisy i cannot so now i start now looking for a way to adjust i'm like okay i won't be going outside to give chapati but now we are still working online and by the way this blew up because at some point i advertised on one of the marketplaces yeah so people were just coming and referring at, uh, others this lady has nice chapatis let me tell you this thing blew and now i was making money and so happy about this money but i'm like why are god's people in america like this i used to enjoy now speaking kikuyu with them but i'm like and i begin to say i'm not loving this and I'm like, it's like I'm speaking against my business. Words have power. But no, I'm not loving this. We go about a year. I'm doing this. And my hand now starts aching. My stomach is so bad. I don't know what is happening. So I go see my doctor. yeah. And doctor says, uh, send me, sends me for test. And I realize that I have a liver problem. They say I have a fatty liver. And I never even used to take care of myself. I'm looking at myself. I have like liver warts, you know. I have just this uh, thing on my skin. I'm looking so bad, yeah. And I'm wondering what is going on. So they tell me I have a fatty liver. And I'm thinking that may be the cause of my pain. And my even my mom would tell me, do you remember the pain you would get every time you got a, a kid? And I'm like, yeah, I'm like, God, I can't uh, work with this hand. Whenever I sleep, it goes all numb, yeah? And I'm getting just these headaches over here. Now, when I go to mix with my people and they're yelling some, some are complaining, some are just telling me about their horrible situations. I was using my husband's cash up. Some would tell me, be careful, your husband will be stolen, you know, because of this cash up. So much fear, so much confusion. Now, uh, what I had learned, yeah, I had learned that God asked you to let go, but still he does his thing, yeah? So I was so unafraid, you know? And I'm like, what, what languages these people are talking? Like, you know, I got, without knowing, I kind of got free, you know? I was free from all these shackles of now you controlling situations so that husband doesn't go away. And even then, I didn't know it, but a lot of insecurities were surrounded about uh, around marriages. Other people would be so sad, like I got divorced, you know. Uh, they would tell about how they got divorced and all these things. And I'm wondering what is wrong with the Gekoyo home. And it was most especially Gekoyos, and they were supporting us so much. And I'm like, some are just like, you will text somebody, they will be quiet, yeah. You know, but that was their coping mechanism. They cannot allow this much noise. And now this new kid in the block, you're disturbing with calls, with, uh, you know, texts. You want to show that, you know, so much customer care. I noticed that our people are not okay. All right. And as I began to, uh, you know, like run away and I'm beginning to ache, I don't even want to tell anybody. Yeah. So I eventually tell my doctor, I'm in so much pain. It goes like this. Yeah. And one of my aunts, the one who passed away when I was in New Brunswick, would complain about that pain in the head. I'm not thinking this could be spiritual or anything. Just one side, my dominant side, feels like it's collapsing. Okay? And now I realize I have to stop this job. Now, would I say that God told me to stop this job? I don't know. All I know is that one day, I go into the internet, right? I go into Facebook and I see some jobs advertised, yeah? Now, these jobs are, you know, in the place uh, my husband works, okay? Uh, so I, I, I apply. I get invited immediately to a job fair. I go, 
I tell them I work in the kitchen. That's where I'm trained. And they don't even want to know. They just want me. This lady just fell in love with from the moment I entered. And by this time, you know, I'm making money. My nails are nice and everything. I'm well structured. She saw me. She was like, my God, I want you. And I'm telling them, uh, don't I need to be trained and all that? And they said there'll be job training, okay? So you're actually ahead because you know how to do, uh, you know, how kitchen stuff. And I'm so flattered, yeah? And I get into this new job. I don't even want to tell people because in the time I've been selling chapatis, it looks like because I was advertising so much, so loudly, so everywhere, People don't know I'm struggling. I'm just trying to establish this thing because the, my thought in my head was that one day my sister will come and my sister is the chapati maker in our family. I recognize this is not my thing. Cake is my thing, you know? And so I'm making cakes, I'm making chapati, samosas, mandazi, and all this, yeah? I'm making money, but I'm working towards making so much money. Remember, I have training in finances, you know, making, you know, saving money, not real finances. Um, I've opened a bank account. I'm saving so that I can buy a chapati machine because from what I can see, my hand is collapsing, yeah? So I want the machine to come. We'll be doing so much production because I'm waiting for my sister because what I knew as a pioneer, when you go ahead, you prepare a way for the others. So I'm saying I want to be so well established that I open a business by the time these people are coming, they will find a job and they won't have to go through all these things I've gone through, yeah? Because where will they even start? You know, so I want them to have, a, 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 you know, a job and a place to stay. I'm working like, you know, but now my hand, when I sleep, I can't, I can't, I can't sleep. It all goes numb. I have a, a weak line in my head. Am I dying? <laughs> you know, what's going on? So uh, this job now accepts me and I start working now for people. And I'm like, this could, oh, I never thought I would work again. But I'm also doing cakes, okay? And so in this place, I start working. This lady, uh, you know, brings me uh, into partnership with another. We work as partners, yeah? And when I meet my partner, I'm like, wow, this is like a pastor's wife. She's so well put together, so organized. She's like a nurse. You know, you know the nurses and teachers we used to know in our childhood. And I tell her, I admire you so much. I wish I can work like you, you know? And eventually now... I start working now i start taking shifts on my own i'm making mistakes i don't know why but for some reason i never start well yeah and so this uh is alerting you know some people are talking about me she's not able to do this job well and i'm now with some uh you know the other people in the place uh africans but not you know from the same place as we are no i don't see even a kenyan there but i could see meet some kenyan nurses eventually yeah so i feel like i'm sticking out like a sore thumb yeah uh, everybody is saying all these things that I'm not working well. But the bosses say I work well. And let me tell you, they would call upstairs and ask, how is this lady, uh, you know, working upstairs? And they say, oh, she works amazing. She's so amazing with the patients, you know. Uh, she talks very well. She has this um, uh, interesting accent. The patients like it. They say they understand her better. So I'm getting all this favor upstairs, but in the kitchen, now, do you remember when I told you that somebody was doing uh, intercession, intercessory prayers for me uh, when breaking my family, my husband's family altars? She had said, your, she had said, your visa has been denied, yeah? I've returned it back to God. I got your visa from all these people. I've returned it back to God. You won't go anywhere. But she said, uh, you know, during the process, I see you fighting with knives in America. You have such a bad heart, you know? But this time she was hating me because she's been put on an assignment and it seems like I'm not listening to her. You know, I'm not doing the things she's saying, including sacrifice. So, ah. Uh, but let me tell you, just to validate her, a lot of the things she taught me and said are coming true. So these people know a lot, yeah? It's just that there's a compromise somewhere. There's just a line that, you know, there's a faulty line, yeah? So in this uh, kitchen, now I remember that she said I would be fighting a lot in a kitchen. So I worked there uh, for some time. And let me tell you, this job for some reason was healing me, okay? Healing me in that we would just work for three 12-hour shift days. We would go, go, go. It was very hard. 
but now I would have three days away from work. Actually, I think three three days and then another two and a half days, depending on how the week is flowing, yeah? You'd have to know the shifts to understand. So I'm enjoying. Whenever I reach upstairs, everybody's like, hi, Margaret, hi. I'm like, wow, okay, nice. I go to the kitchen hellhole, all right? Everybody is turned against me. Only some bosses are like, you know, uh, what, this one uh, manager came and she, one time we got to talk and I'm like, I'm in hell here. And she says, I know, I see how you're treated. But let me tell you, it's the people, not you. Okay, it's not you. You're not the problem. And so I would see other people who come in like me and they would be under so much attack. And I would just adopt them under my wing, yeah? So I'm like talking to them nicely. They would work so hard to be accepted and fail. By the time they're coming to me, I'm like, I did my job. I already told you it's not you. It's the it's the place, yeah? So you stay over there, all right? And so I would learn now to separate myself from everybody. Run away when I need to run. And these people would be in my business. Whatever I'm eating, if I sit down uh, ready, re reading a book or... It, she thinks she's so special. And one day I would ask this white man who came so broken that I had to take under my wing. What do people see in me? What is it? Because like there were times of the month, there, there would be a synchrony of madness and I would be attacked by just anyone. Okay. And they are, uh, they're hurling insults across the hall, you know. And I tell my husband these things and he's like, I don't understand. And the lady I admired so much has now turned against me. She's always so unsatisfied with how I work and she's my partner. So like it's hellish. Suddenly like everything uh, is changed, you know. And by the way, I caught COVID at, that, at some point and had to go away. Coming back, everything is changed. So now this lady had to go away on her vacation. In this time, for some reason... I come into my own. I'm the only one working on this floor apart from the days I'm away. So I'm working more days, yeah, saving money, okay? Now I'm not even saying at home that I work because I learned things can just go, you know, so wrong. People think the way I used to think. This is America. And I learned well, well what my husband had gone through and so many other people. And I understood this is why our people are so broken. So many demands. Nobody is there for you. People want to talk to you on your free time. Like you will find a message. You will talk to a person you're thinking. The more I talk to you, the more when I need someone to talk to, I'll find you. Nope. Nobody is there for you. Nobody is available. And I could see like some people are even hating. Some people are just so shady, you know. And I'm like, wow, what is it? What have I done wrong? I've tried to show people this America. Whenever there's a problem, I'm trying to share it. I do not get it. This, I'm working in hell. You know, hell's kitchen. But we kept going on. God would give me people to do the journey with. And in this time that my partner is away, some people start to show me favor. I don't get it, you know. Eventually, there comes another lady now from this uh, group of Africans, yeah, and we, she becomes my friend first. I didn't know it, but this person was about to come and take over. She was a high power. I tell you, whenever God takes me somewhere and people treat me the way they will treat me, although I'm sent to them, it's like a warning, yeah, if you're not nice. Because some people, when they work to, uh, in places, because uh, workplaces are very toxic, and this is the reason, some people come and occupy and dominate Okay, and some are godly people. They serve God, but they have found a way to be louder, stronger. You know, they dominate. Okay, maybe even their prayers are dominate, dominating prayers. Okay, now when I leave, another one comes after me. Now this one will show you fire. She has come to take you out. And if you get to stay, you will be disciplined. You will say, it was better, Margaret, yeah? So this place, I, I think I came in uh, November 2021, okay? And towards November 2022, my arm it starts to ache. And now I can hear God telling me, leave. I'm like, I don't get it. I do not get it. And I'm thinking, okay, it's this trace. If I work different, 
this hand will stop stop aching i'm imagining god telling me to leave because he can't tell me to leave this many times okay and the people upstairs like me and let me tell you in this place because my husband works somewhere close we would meet for lunch okay so we would meet for lunch at the cafeteria so our, we synchronize our time and we meet and now the people at the cafeteria are so nice like when they see us as a couple such great service okay hi now i'm wondering i don't even want to leave this job because i get to see hubby during the day have lunch with him you know so uh this is fine for me it's just the kitchen that is hellish leave and i know sometimes uh people of god will say god did not tell you to leave it was your own uh, madness and comforts that you wanted to embrace leave my hand goes numb at night i come in in the morning i'm so tired i have not slept i work the trays again i'm trying to find a way i can work them so that i don't ache as much so i go see my doctor and i tell her uh, you know in the time i was making chapatis she had said i have cerebral spondylosis why am i saying this because she's saying i have an arthritic uh, uh it's like an arthritis issue yeah and she's checking my neck okay so i'm like this doctor doesn't listen to me because she's indian and she's been to kenya the way she handles us it feels like she doesn't value us i tell her it's not my neck and she's like can you feel those lymph nodes yeah that is arthritis okay so it's it the one that's affecting me all the yeah margaret uh, why are you acting like you know <gasps> okay so my hand it gets numb it's like a nerve problem you don't think i have a pinched nerve no she uh, tells me what uh, she tells me this and she orders therapy for me physical therapy and i'm like god this has happened so many times what is this so no, towards november i leave in this whole time god has said take me, taken me back because of the liver issues i had started taking keto diet and my son and uh, my son and my husband had joined me so i'm eating less I did not know it, but every time God would uh, call me to change my diet, and at some point I would think it's not God, yeah? He was preparing a thing, okay? Now uh, I start now being home, and I start this channel. How did I start this channel? My husband was away one time, yeah? Uh, for like um, a, conven a convention, yeah? And I came on, I started, I said, ah, now I'm having so much trouble at work, maybe I should return my YouTube, which I used to do cooking videos, and I didn't see it grow. So I'm like, anyway, now I don't even need money to be paid, I'll just be coming here and talking, you know, because I used to admire some of my teachers. So I'll come and share about my journey to Canada, all right? And so when my husband is away, I come and I start sharing. I'm like having all these hours, like I wake up, I shower, I just come here and start sharing the videos and I'm expecting, okay, now people will be interested with this. They were interested in the first uh, video. Some would say like, you guys, uh, this you're making such long videos, uh, you know, you're, and I'm like, okay, whatever I do doesn't work. Anyway, I'll try to improve, yeah? Now I'd throw in some cooking videos. I would throw in a word. Now I start teaching again as, as if I'm teaching broken to hold yeah and i'm like are people even understanding no wonder broken to hold never grew because people really can't hear me and i'm like notes who do you think you are you used to lisp nobody understands you even my husband had told me no one can understand you unless they love you you know because the way i talk i will th talk about the thing i'm thinking ahead before i talk about the thing that is uh, i'm supposed to say and so in that period i'm watching like psychology uh you know videos and i'm thinking perhaps i have adhd uh, adhd yeah and i had also now discovered it's like i have dyslexia because my ability to retrieve a word I would be talking to somebody and if i'm nervous i will not get that word okay so i'm thinking yeah this is this must be it how can i grow this youtube channel okay i don't even uh, want to earn i'm not thinking of earning so what will i do i can you know take a break sometimes but sometimes i get a word i come and share it it gets like what what, what views do you give me 58 views something 23 i'm actually lucky if i get 15 yeah 
So anyway, I did not know it. But now as I'm sharing my journey, my sister is like now seeing me for the first time. She's like, what? Ndusi went all, through all this. I can't imagine. For her, it's touching to her. Perhaps she understands how I talk. She shares it to everyone, you know. And we had talked of going to Kenya, okay? Uh, but I, I'm not understanding how we'll go. Habi is away uh, for co a convention. He doesn't seem to get, uh, you know, the timing right, yeah? So I'm waiting, I'm waiting for this Kenya. I'm waiting, I'm eating my diet. You know, I'm not working as much. I'm not work, working as much because I'm not at work. I'm even beginning to get the weight back. And I'm like, now what? I'm so depressed. I come here, I'm smiling. So I'm like, God, we better go to Kenya before this weight comes back. Yeah, I need to look good as I'm going home. Yeah, at this time, I've really saved. And also, I learned now how to be disciplined. How to, if I'm giving you this much, that's the much I'm giving you. That's the much I can be able to give you. The rest I'm keeping because my sister will one day come. And I'll have to open a business, okay? So my sister will not go through this. She will not suffer, all right? And as she comes, I have to have thought of something else, establish something else, so that when she comes, at least we have money to start. And now I'm working on how my sister can start applying the green card and everything, yeah? So now eventually I'm thinking, like I feel, I feel a pressure to post, uh, that I will post, that I will make a post on Facebook showing in the fifth year, the year of grace, these two kids came to see uh, their mothers, you know, because now we're in discussion with Habi. Can we really go to Kenya, you know? But his time was just not synchronizing with mine. In the meantime, I'm working here and uh, we don't even get to go. Uh, we were thinking we will leave in November. We don't even get to go until the 30th of December, 2022, okay? So we live here 2022, December 30th, and arrive in Kenya on 31st. The first thing on my agenda is like, I'm going to Rema. I'm going to Rema nights, yeah? I've been away too long. I'm coming back home, yeah? Rema is a blast. All of you are there, right? Because there's no space, I was hoping to see my pastor, and make a sacrifice okay now why am i saying this because david says uh in psalms 51 yeah let's read it together he says uh you know have mercy on me O oh lord this is a prayer we had been making as we were preparing for a journey to canada the first time yeah and uh i would think yeah the lord doesn't you know uh, need sacrifice but have mercy on jerusalem uh, and when you heal Jerusalem, bulls will be uh, bulls will be slaughtered in on your altar. Okay, hey, my face is even shaking. Shaking. I've talked too much, you guys. So just before we left for Kenya, yeah, God had spoken to me uh, on Psalms. Um, is it Psalm sixteen? Since I have my Bible, pardon me. I think it's Psalm 16, 6 that says the boundary lines have fallen into place. Surely I have a, a delightful inheritance. Okay. Yeah, I've, I've marked it. Yeah. And in my Bible, it says the land, the land you have given me is a pleasant land. What a wonderful inheritance. Okay. And now I come. To Kesha and Pastor T is preaching on Psalms 16 5 and 6 and 5 says Lord you alone are in my are my inheritance my cup of blessing you guard all that is mine okay the land you have given me is a pleasant land surely I have a delightful inheritance here it says what a wonderful inheritance okay now because i had learned let's go back to psalms 51 okay uh wow my face is shaking you guys have mercy on me oh god because of your unfailing love because of your great compassion i used to read another really sweet uh, version yeah 
have mercy on me, O God, because of your unfailing love, because of your great compassion, blot out the stains of my sins. Wash me clean from my guilt. Purify me from my sin. For I recognize my rebellion if it haunts me day and night against you and you alone have I sinned. I have done what is evil in your sight. You will be proved right in what you say and your judgment against me is just. For I was born a sinner, yes, from the moment my mother conceived me, but you desire honesty from the womb. It says something sweet uh, on a different version, teaching me wisdom even there. Purify me from my sins and I will be clean. Wash me and I will be whiter than snow. Oh God, give me back my joy again. You have broken me, now let me rejoice. Don't keep looking at my sins. Remove the stain of my guilt, creating me a clean heart. Oh God, renew a loyal spirit within me. Do not banish me from your presence and don't take your Holy Spirit from me. Restore to me the joy of salvation and make me willing to obey you. Then I will teach your ways to, re to rebels and they will return to you. Forgive me for shedding blood. Oh God, who saves? Then I will joyfully sing of your forgiveness. And seal my lips, O Lord, that my mouth may praise you. You do not desire a sacrifice or I would offer you or I would give it. You do not want a burnt offering. The sacrifice you desire is a broken spirit. You will not reject a broken uh, and repentant heart, O God. Look with favor on Zion and help her rebuild the walls of Jerusalem. Then you will be pleased with sacrifices offered in the right spirit with burnt offerings and whole burnt offerings. Then bulls will again be sacrificed on your altar. How amazing. I want you to read that, especially you who is looking to repent and return back to God. It's so important that you should repair. You should come back. He's the only one who can show you mercy. Okay. And now I come to my church. Yeah. And uh, I hear Pastor T is preaching what God just told me. The land you're on is pleasant. You know, it's like I have kept you here. And now in the times that I was cooking chapati, God was, uh, you know, uh, revealing so many things. And he would show me, uh, do you remember when you left St. John's and it just shut? Yeah, that was you leaving that land and never to come back. Okay. Do you remember when you had that tour in Orlando? Yes, that was me. I knew that you loved Orlando and now I was giving you a tour so that you can say goodbye. Oh Lord, thank you. Now, do you remember when you went to um, this land, you know, New Brunswick, Dieppe, yeah? Yeah. And you were taken back by a car, you know? You were brought in by a car. Yes, now that is making you local, okay? Now you're local. You can go back and forth. You can drive into and out of this land, okay? So you have placed me. He has placed me at the right place, you know, where I can, you know? Now you're no longer coming through the sky like a visitor. You're local. You can travel, okay? How marvelous is our God, okay? And so I'm going to stop here, but I'm going to tell you now how I came home. And unknowingly, I would now come into agreements, you know, with fighting for my family. All right. Yeah. All right. See you on the next one. Bye bye.